Hey folks, we're going to attempt to do a garden show today, even though the weather has been horrendous here in South Georgia. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet, where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. Woo, folks, we have had some horrible, horrible weather in the garden. And you are so depressed. And I am so depressed. Give he you a little love. He needs some therapy sessions. Oh, man. I had the prettiest garden I believe I've ever had. Maybe you counted your chickens where they hatched. Maybe I counted my chickens before they hatched. Uh, tomato crop, just unbelievable. I mean, just loaded up. Huge tomatoes. Look size right here. Just beautiful. Just no, I, I picked one tomato with blossom in rock. Blossom in rock was, was not an issue. Just beautiful. Corn was looking good, watermelons, everything was just picture perfect. Mm -hmm. Starting last Tuesday, we got a storm that blew in here in just a matter of no time. By the time I walked out of the office door, and it's probably uh, 100 feet to the house, and I got to the house down there, a massive storm blew in here, and uh, the wind was pretty rough. We got a little hail, not as much as some of our neighbors did, but uh, it blew the corn down and uh, caused some damage. Blew some flowers down. Blew some tomatoes down that we Blew had to take. tomatoes over. So, you know, the next day we get up, storm, we got some damage. Let's get out there and salvage what we can. So we get out there and we prop some of the tomatoes up and put some new stakes in there and try to get our bands together. Thankfully, our corn, we had harvested just about all of it. So we get through there one more time when it was laying over and we finished harvesting the corn. So we got a good crop out of the corn. And then for the next five days, rain, 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 rain. So last now week- we're going on seven days. Well, we've had one day, I think, without any rain. Mm -hmm. So uh, since last Tuesday, we've had, excuse me, last week, last week we had 10 inches of rain. So far this week, we've had two inches of rain and it's calling for 100% tomorrow, more rain, so. The garden's pretty much had it. Watermelons was coming in. I made a good crop of watermelons, great crop of watermelons, and they just like, boom. I'll show you what I'm talking about, folks. Even some of the watermelons that I had harvested, and they were just starting to come in, they just rotten and just blowing up. You can see that soft spot right there. You can take your finger and push it, <laughs> push it in there. Just full of water. So the water has just decimated everything. Now, I didn't grow any cantaloupes, but I can tell you the worst crop on the worst crop you could have with that much water would be cantaloupes. They're the first ones that blow up. Mm -hmm. Watermelons and tomatoes are probably second, third. Yeah, I went to pick a couple of watermelons up and when I picked them up, the bottom just it's like blew out. Blew out, yeah. Just yeah. all over the place. They looked okay and you picked them up and just yeah. yellow gushing. Figs on the fig tree, the same thing. They just yeah. blowing up. So uh, I'm a little bit discouraged to say the least. Had a buddy of mine that planted a uh, He's a nurseryman, so he's, he's good at growing things. Planted an in-ground garden at his house for the first time this year, and he texted me this morning and said, it's pretty much eight, eight bit of dust. Mm -hmm. So he's, it's frustrating, especially for people like him. Yeah. It's just starting out gardening. Flowers are still holding up a little bit. Okra is still holding up a little bit, but it's, it's struggling. Yeah, green beans, get a little rust on them. Mm -hmm. Disease everywhere. You know, something else I noticed is the insect pressure. I don't know if it's not, we've not been able to spray, but you see this sunflower leaf here has chewed on. So the insect pressure has actually jumped up and, and seems to be a lot worse to me in the last day or two. Is that due to how much rain we've had? Is it due to the fact we just couldn't treat? I don't know, but it's, it's rough. Mm. Tomatoes, let me show you what we're talking about here. You see, that just looks like a pretty tomato, doesn't it? But you see here on the end right there, that's what's happening, just splitting. We've even got tomatoes in containers mm -hmm. that are splitting. I mean, that's how bad it is when you get so much water that the plants in containers, which normally drain out really well, are busting. But these tomatoes just have so much moisture and they're just busting at the seams right there and then have a bad spot. Matter of hours, they'll be gone. Anyway. anyway, what do you do about that? So that's what we're going to talk about today. What do you do about when you have this type of situation? Well, you know, so many times we talk about spraying with fungicides to combat disease. 
I don't care how much you sprayed, it wouldn't have done any good mm. on this. So Mother can, you, just, can you garden in the rain? Mother Nature just loses curve sometimes. It's tough. Tough. It's very tough. Yeah. Well, before we get going, I got something for you to try. Oh boy. I always worry. No, not the blindfold. <laughs> And we're gonna see if you can pick out a tomato. Can, can you put it on? I don't know, but I'm always worried about these blindfolds. So I got two things for you to taste here. Now we can't be throwing any hot pepper or anything like that in there. I really thought twice about it, but <laughs> I said no. Why? What's the purpose of the blindfold? Because I don't want you to see what you're eating. It would make a difference if I saw what I was eating. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. I, I got two tomato sandwiches here. Two tomato sandwiches? <laughs> I got to eat two tomato sandwiches? <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So first one here. There's your hands. Can you feel it? Okay. Yeah. Taste of that one. No. Well, let's start. Uh, Is these a different type of tomatoes that I'm eating these yeah, tomato sandwiches yeah, from? Yeah. That's good. It's a little soft. I really can't taste the texture of this butter in there. Uh, mm. I got some of it then. That's good. Good tomato sandwich. Is it getting all over me? Yeah. <laughs> well, if it gets all over you, you know it's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty good sandwich. Pretty good sandwich. How many sandwiches do you think you've ate last week? I have eaten a tomato sandwich every day for the last two weeks. Can I kind of clean up a little bit here for no, you? No, no. No, just leave it alone. Yeah, just get it out of your mouth. <laughs> okay. This laughing is not helping me any. <laughs> this tomato sandwich doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel it right. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't have it the looks... weight to it. It's just... Something that feel right here. That's not good feel. <laughs> not good at all. That's not so. What am I eating here? It's, you can't taste it. It's not. Something's not right. <laughs> Take another. It's real chewy. <laughs> you just can't do it. It's not. It's not good. <laughs> Is this the freeze dried tomatoes? Yeah, that's the freeze dried uh, tomatoes. Oh, okay. Well, I think you need to take one more bite to really. Yeah. So we can't make a no, tomato we sandwich no, out we of freeze dried no, tomatoes. Mm. Okay, you can take it. It's a texture thing. It's a texture thing. Well, it's a taste thing, but it's a texture thing. My okay, guy didn't have enough mayo. Now, that was a good sandwich. So what you're attempting to do here is for us to have tomatoes, we'll have yeah. tomato sandwiches year round. Well, a little chewy. <laughs> yeah, that's not, uh, that's not gonna work there. Mm. You got some work to do on your dehydrated tomatoes there. Freeze-dried tomatoes. Freeze-dried, yeah. Okay, well, I just wanted you to be not be biased. Well, I wouldn't, no. <laughs> yeah, I've had tomato sandwiches every day, I know for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Some more than what's Some there. more than that, yeah. I, I just absolutely love a tomato sandwich. So let's talk about the rain, what we can do. All right, so maybe, just maybe, we won't get a rain today. But we know we got 100% coming in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Really and truly, if I go out there and I treat today with a fungicide and we get rain all day tomorrow, have I done any good? No. Probably not much. If I go out there and spray an insecticide, yeah, I could get a little bit of a uh, probably control there, but if it washes off within a couple of hours, I've really not done a whole lot there then. On these insecticides, you're going to need it to stick probably four hours. Best case scenario is stick during the night when the caterpillars are doing a lot of their feeding and everything. But pesticide treatments in these type situations right here are just not going to do much good, as much as I hate to say that. So some things that you can do. Really, Sheila, what can you do? I mean, it's just, you can't even walk out there. You bog up to I your know. knees almost. I lost my shoes. You walk slap out of your shoes out there in the corn, I mean, tomato patch. Left them laying out there. 
Well, I couldn't get just walk the slap out of them in the mud, didn't you? I couldn't get them out of the mud. Yeah. I said, well, the rain will come and wash the mud off, maybe. Yeah. So you can uh, reinforce your trellises. Yeah, and that's one thing I had to, to go do because uh, my hallucinators got blowed down. I got them back up and got some metal fence posts in there and, and savaged that somewhat. Mm -hmm. So make sure your plants are tied up, supported, check your trellises, reinforce them. Yeah, that's one thing you can do. Harvest as much as you can prior to the rain. Yeah, but how do you know you're going to get as much rain as we did? Yeah. We did Did we know last Tuesday, and that started raining last Tuesday about 5.02 right here mm -hmm. in the storm. Did we know last Tuesday at lunchtime how much it was no. going to rain? It was going to rain 10 inches in the next few days. But in hindsight, I should have went and harvested some of those tomatoes that were pink. Yeah, in hindsight, I should have, I should have harvested more tomatoes. I mean, watermelons and put them up, yeah. but I didn't. Um, if you know it's going to rain, stop watering ahead of the rain yeah because i did have my drip on that morning I, I i shouldn't have but did you know it was gonna rain 10 inches no it was just a gamble but yeah i'm kind of cynical today have you noticed that yeah yeah very simple yeah. glass is half 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 empty half empty um another thing you can do is during the rain go up to your garden and look and see where your drainage areas are. That's a good one there. Now I did notice in one of my plots there where I have some okra plotted, it's holding water down in there. So that is a good point you made one there. One of your row of tomatoes too. Yep. Where I got yep. stuck. So identify your problems areas, um, make notes and know this is where what you need to work on. Yeah. And if you did plant your garden in a low area, you know that was a big issue. So you can't do that again. Um, remove and prune off bad leaves. Mm, it can be tough to do when you're doom and gloom to go out yeah. there and to do that. It's hard to make yourself go out there and, and trim dead leaves off. Pull if, if if you've got a plant that's just it can go to make it. Go ahead and pull it Get out. Get her out of there. Yep. Um, we talked about fungal issues and what you can do and can't do. Um, another thing is. If you've got an area that's washed really bad and it's washed the soil away from those roots, you might want to throw some back more up. soil back to yeah, it. Yeah, I can see that. Um, so every time I have went out there, I take my wheel hook because I'm a big believer in this right here. Once uh, you can get out there, as soon as you can, you want to take your wheel hoe and run through there and bust that soil up because that will help things dry out a lot faster. You'd be surprised how disrupting that soil and opening it up and letting it breathe will help it dry out so much quicker. Mm -hmm. So every time I've had an opportunity to do that in the last week, I would go out there and get my wheel. If I just had an hour, I'd go out there and do it and I would work my way through there and do that. Two hours time it was raining again. Mm -hmm. But it made you feel good at that time. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Yesterday I saw you out there playing. And it rained all night long. Mm -hmm. Woke me up twice during the night thundering and storming and raining. So I go back out there this morning and it looks like I hadn't done anything. But but you know, deep down in your heart, you did. <laughs> yeah, I know I did it, but it didn't do no good. That's what's so frustrating. It did do good. It may have for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. So the other thing rain brings is a lot of weeds. Yeah, now one thing I did do yesterday afternoon, we had a little break, I was out there and been able to weed some. So those weeds pull out of the ground a lot oh, quicker when that ground is saturated and wet. They come more often, but yeah, you can. Yep. Make you feel good pulling up those weeds. It did make me feel. I was in my sweet potatoes, and I said, you know, I'm going to go there. I had a little grass, and then I went through there and got my grass. I did make me feel better. It was therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. You know, my sweet potatoes are going to make it. Yes, I got to weed them out here. And you know what? I, they needed fertilizing. They need fertilizing, but I'm not going to put it out until I know this storm system's over right. with, and I'm going to go out there and side dress them one last time. Um, Cause that's another thing is um, nutrient levels the get nutrient washed levels gets washed out. out. Yeah. So you may have to adjust your fertilization schedule a little bit. You may have just fertilized two days ago. Gone, gone. But it's gone. So yep. start over. Start over again. I know with my sweet potatoes, it's starting to run now. Normally speaking, I already had enough fertilizer to them, but I know that's gone. So I'm gonna side dress them one more time, and when they start running, maybe maybe it'll be okay. Maybe. Maybe. Um, also mulch, you know, during the dry weather, you have the mulch to keep things moist. 
but sometimes we get in this much rain, the mulch can be a bad thing. Yeah, and mulch can wash away with this much rain too. We're, we're, we know if you use certain types of mulch, when you get this much rain, they'll just wash, slap away. But if it's holding up, if you got say wheat straw or something that's holding up around those plants, it can cause some issues with too much moisture for too long of a time. And hail, we had some Maybe. Yeah, we had a little hail here. Uh, what would you say? We was watching it hit the pool, maybe size of a marble a little bit more. Yeah. Well, just a few miles away from here, I was over there yesterday, I'm going to say 15 miles to the west of us. They had hail as big as golf balls or bigger. It. They had people over there had cows that got killed in a mm -hmm. hailstorm. I've never heard of that before. And a lot of the crops over in that part of the county just got decimated. Yeah, windows broke. Yep, car windows was busted out, cars was damaged, but killing cows, have you ever heard of such? Never heard that in my 50 sure years. Just... No, the guy said he was first hand information, said he had so and so cows got killed by the hail damage. And also there was a couple of dogs got killed that was wow. tied to trees. Wow, wow. So you imagine something coming out of the sky that big around yeah, like a torpedo cause yeah it's just boom <laughs> unbelievable so if you know you're going to have hail damage you can cover your tender plants yeah but how do you know you're going to have hail damage hail's one well, of those now, things they did that just, predict that they, they predicted hail damage yeah they did i was listening to the weather guy at what point when the storm started raining you can't run out there in the rain and start to <laughs> no they predicted it like a, a day ahead uh, that there was going to be Hail. What do you do about it if you if you know hail's coming? Well, you can move your container plants under a protected area. So you got a vehicle sitting out there in the yard and I everything, yeah, and I you did. got pets or, or animals you got to tend to, and you're going to go move your containers out there. When you, if you got a hail storm coming in, you got a lot more to be worried about than that. Well, some people may not have all that. They just may have this precious container of tomatoes, and they want to protect it. And I guess it would help if you moved it out from the torrential downpour as well so yeah but to know you got hail coming hail's always been like a shot in the dark we get it every now and then here I'm trying to predict that's tough yeah did i say i was a little cynical today yeah you're a little cynical and i was talking about those containers with this much rain you're going to have water pile up in the bottom water reservoir mm -hmm. um, as well as buckets and so keep your water excess water poured off yeah or you have those mosquitoes hatch out and bugs mm -hmm. get even worse mm -hmm. mm. so no words of encouragement no these, words of encouragement i am just down and out i mean i am i am in a bad bad point with my garden mm -hmm. we've still got flowers some flowers are still looking pretty yeah. good and i walked out there just about 30 minutes ago and just walked around trying to get inspiration and it's tough. I mean, we've got the flowers going, but everything else just looks so rough. And you see tomatoes over there that you know normally you would pick, but they're going to blow up. They're so full of water. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's discouraging. Discouraging. Pray for sunshine. Pray for sunshine. After tomorrow, <coughs> let's hope after tomorrow we start drying out a little bit and move forward. So I planted sunflowers. I got a, two, a acre and a half spot in the back back there that I need to plant a seed crop of pumpkins. So I got my pumpkins ready to go before this come in. I go out there last Tuesday and plant my sunflowers. Uh, and I think they're all washed away. Mm, but we just, will survive. You're just gonna have to put your big boy pants on, and suck it, it up. Redo it. And redo it. Yep. Can't give up. Can't give up. And there's going to be a lot to be done once we get through this little spell here, but we got to get through this. We can move on to our summertime garden. Try to inspire me here, yes. Succession planting. Succession planting. We get our peas in the ground. Get peas in the ground, plant those summer cover crops. I got to clean my corn up. You know, those green stalks of corn, you got to chop them down. Yeah. I, if I get out down. right now, I bog down to yeah. my knees, but I got to wait a day or two. There's Great, no. pretty crop of some uh, winter squash out there that's probably going to take some pretty heavy Oh, you damage. think so? Yeah. Oh, I was looking at it this morning. You they look so good, A bumper crop. A bumper crop. Delicata red curry winter squash. Some of the prettiest you've ever seen. But I didn't see any damage to them yet. Yeah, but they'll get disease in them. You'll start seeing these little spots on the fruit like that right there. Like that. Yeah, it's not good. They blow up. Blow up. Mm. What about your gourds? Gorge has got down to mildew on them terribly bad. Did you notice the leaves dying back on those? 
You can't fix that. Can't do much about it at this point. Yeah. Okay, well, if y'all got any advice for Brad here <laughs> to pep him up and get him out of his slump, yeah. please send him some words of encouragement. It will get better. It's just a matter of time. But, you know, we have this happen every now and then. So before this came in, we had a dry year. Now, I've noticed over the years, I make the best garden since we have the drip irrigation. I make the best garden on a dry year. You can control your water in there. Your fruits are a lot sweeter. Everything just works better on a dry year. Bins, we got the drip irrigation. But usually it's it's wet in the spring, not in June. Uh, I think last year we had a we had a spot not as bad as this. We had a, a, a time in June with a we had a lot of heat last June. Though. We did have some rain come in, but not to the point yeah. where we've had here. Yeah. Okay. Got a corny joke for you. All right, I need a corny joke. Pick Pe me up. Yeah, people's been saying worse corny jokes. Worse corny joke. I actually got two for you. Oh. Okay. What do you call a wet bear? A wet bear? Mm-hmm. Teddy bear? I don't know. Drizzly bear. <laughs> it's not a garden-related joke. No, but it's pretty it's, good. It's a, it's, we talk about all this. Yeah, drizzly bear. I got drizzly you. Drizzly bear. Okay. Yeah. What do you call a deer that loves to be out in the rain? Reindeer. Oh, ah, I got that one. I got that one. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. So what about the old goat? The old goat. Old goat drawing, folks. We got an old goat figurine. We hide it here on the set somewhere. If you find it, put it in the comments below. And next week, we'll do a drawing for the old goat. You got to put the location down in the comments below and last week's winner or this week's winner for last week's finding the old goat is carlene jackson carlene send us your shipping information to hoss tools excuse me cuss serve at hosstools.com and we'll get you a nice present sent out okay and garden spotlight yeah it? maybe their garden looks better than mine does yeah, and it's a bunch of container gardens. Oh, container so. gardens, which is probably uh, going to end up making it better. And this is interesting because these are these horse waterers. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. Is that not cool? It is cool. I've never seen that before. That is, that is okay, nice. Okay, this is Kurt Sterling, Lake Mary, Florida, 9. Kirk, you got it going on, buddy. I like the way you took the blocks here and lift them up. So Kurt's... Kurt's going to drain out. He's going to yeah, be okay regardless of okay. how much rain he gets there. It looks like all his. Is yeah. Up. And also, he's got some old whiskey barrels there mm -hmm. that he's growing some squash in, looks like. He's got peppers, sweet potato, eggplant, squash beans, tomatoes, and carrots. Mm -hmm. This is more of his container garden right here. Oh, this is neat. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you this picture. This is a better picture of his... I would have never thought of They that. sell these at Home Depot, not Home Depot, Tractor Supply as uh, and feeders. And just got them up on blocks? Yep. They're, they're, I said waters. They're actually feeders, like hay feeders. And he converted them to uh, growing beds. That is nice. Cool. Yep. Thank you, Kurt. Yep. He's got to come. Let me show this last one. Right here. <laughs> is that sweet potatoes? I believe it is. He's got going up on a trail. Yep. Look at there. Thank you for sending those. That's interesting. All right, Monterey. Drive. All right, the Monterey giveaway. We got to get around here and get the Monterey giveaway. For when the weather does straighten up, and we can apply some of these. Monterey is sponsoring this giveaway right here at the end of the Row by Row show. And it's four products here. We got sticky traps that works wonderful for sticky, sticky in those insects. Find out what kind of insect problems you have and also catching them, them bothersome beetles and things like that. We got fish and guano, which is an all natural fertilizer, complete disease control, which is uh, going to be needed. And we got horticultural oil here. And this is an insecticide that you can spray anytime during the day or night. It's not, uh, it's not one of those heavy oils that it's going to burn with. It's one of those really, we call these refined oils mm -hmm. that you can spray in the heat. Works wonderful on those soft body insects. So. So last week our question was, what type of flowers do we have? And a lot of people knew it because they had watched a video where you had showed the flowers. Mm -hmm. But it was unique. It was yeah. very unique. But there were a lot that didn't know what it was. Right. It was about 50-50. Mm -hmm. 
So this week. Well, who's the winner? Oh, uh, who's the winner? Uh, David Casey. David Casey. How about it, David? Appreciate it, buddy. And you were the winner of this right here. David, we got your information. We got your shipping information there, David. We'll get this shipped out there to you. So this week, the question they need to answer is, how much rain have you got? Yep. How much in the last 10 days, how much rain have you got? Now, we're sitting, as if we speak right here, at about 12 inches. How much have you had in the last 10 days? Give us answer now. that, and it'll put you in the drawing for the Monterey yep. stuff. All right, folks, thank you for watching and pray we all get some sunshine and we get back out there in the garden and we can, if I don't, I'm going to go stir crazy. Yeah. I can't get out there and do anything. We can't go fishing. We can't go fishing. We can't too do much that. water. Too much water. But things will get better. Yeah. Thank you for watching and when it dries up, get outside and get dirty. Thanks for watching.